हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ट्रांसवर्स वाइब्रेशन ऑफ ए स्ट्रिंग इन आवर लास्ट डिस्कशन वी कंसीडर दैट इफ वी हैव अ लार्ज स्ट्रिंग एंड इट इज फिक्स्ड एट द टू एंड्स देन वी कंसीडर दैट स्ट्रिंग हैविंग ए लार्ज नंबर ऑफ मासेस फ्रॉम पॉइंट पी इज इक्वल टू वन टू पी इज इक्वल टू एन but we can't take the string as uh, considered by finite number of points and these points are separated by some distance a that we have considered in our last topic the string it is a continuous element so we can't just put uh, masses at a particular uh, distance and these masses in a continuous string or in a large rope in a large coat can't be taken in a finite number and today our topic of discussion is that if we have given a string and the string is fixed at both ends these ends of the string are not going to move anywhere then this string today we will take in parts and these parts are in finite in number we just considered that this string has a mass of delta m and this string has a distance of delta x and these elements are in finite in number so that by connecting all these elements we can get hold the string and is there is also a condition uh, that the length of these elements that is which we have taken as delta x that is approximately tends to zero so that we can get all the vibrations all the normal modes that should be present in the string uh, so what we are doing uh, from next to uh, a topic uh, to our from our previous topic to our today's topic is that in the previous topic we considered that string is made up of um point masses and the point masses are separated by distance of a and these point masses are finite in number that is n but today we are taking the string is a continuous element or substance and this string is divided into infinite number of elements such that the length of these all elements is approximately equal to 0 now we are moving to our mathematical part we are just considering that this is any element of our string and it is at a distance of x1 from the starting and this point at as a distance of x2 from the starting and let us again consider the length of this element is delta x now when the disturbance is given transfer waves are produced and this string moves in upward and downward direction let us consider only this part after getting energy or after getting disturbance what happens to this part this part moves in the upward direction and on this x shifts to the point a dash and this x2 let us consider this shift to the point b dash now on uh, this length as we know that is this small part length is delta x and it is such that this delta x very very small and uh, let us consider from the mean position the string just moved another upward direction with a vertical displacement vertical position why because if we are taking a dash b dash is very small such that delta x tends to be equal to 0 it means these two points are not uh, two points this whole element is moving towards a single point and that single point have a coordinate uh, that is y and this coordinate depends upon these coordinates x because when you put the limitation that delta x tends to 0 this Uh, distance that is x two minus x one also just move to a single point, and this single point has a coordinate x at any time t. Hence, this y depends upon the 
two coordinates, two variables that is x and t it is a function of two coordinates. Now at b dash the wire is uh, putting attention on this point in a tangential direction about this string and let us consider this tension is t as this small part is a point it means that this whole uh, part will experience the same direction in the opposite uh, points at a dash and b dash let us consider the tension is t all there also uh, with horizontal this tangential tension is making an angle of theta 2 and this tangential tension is making an angle of theta 1 because the uh, wire, wire or this string is moving in upward and downward direction only it means this tension only the vertical component of this tension is going to move this wire in upward or downward direction then if this is the horizontal component then that is t cos theta it means the vertical component on this point uh, that is at y x or x y the vertical component is t sin theta 2 similarly if this angle is theta 1 then this will be the horizontal component that is t cos theta 1 similarly this will be the vertical component and this vertical component is given by t cos theta 1 hence this point that is x y the point on the string experience two forces one in up vertically upward direction and another in the vertical downward direction if we take the downward direction as negative force and vertically upward direction as positive force then i uh, we will have the vertical force is equal to t sine theta 2 that is taken as positive the upward force and minus t sine theta 1 in our every assumptions in some simple harmonic motion we always consider that the motion um, motion from the mean position is not very large the angles made on the string by the string are not very large so we can just put uh, sine theta 1 is approximately equal to tangent theta 1 and so on sine theta 2 is approximately equal to tangent theta 2 these two changes we are going to make in our force then what we have f y is equal to t tangent theta 2 minus t tangent theta 1 this tangent theta 2 and tangent theta 1 they are indicating the change of y with respect to x uh, they are representing the slope that is the change in y with respect to x at point x2 if we are taking the angle theta 2 and at point x1 if we are taking the angle theta 1 so we can substitute the value of tangent theta as change in y with respect to change in x because change in y is representing the perpendicular and change in x representing the base and this trigonometric function tangent theta can be given as perpendicular uh, divided by base so the perpendicular is y and the base is uh, that is x and y is changing with x so the angle can be given theta 2 that is dy upon dx at point x2 and this tangent theta 1 as dy upon dx as uh, at the point x1 now just uh, giving the mathematical values uh, we can put change in y with change in x we have taken the partial derivative here because we are considering that uh, for this time in uh, time will remain constant for this instant uh, at point x2 and this is change in y with x so we are considering at that uh, these two uh, are at a single time or simultaneously or at a instant of time 
we are taking these two position at an instant of time and this figure can be written as a function of x2 and this figure can be written as a function of x1 so we can put this that is fx2 minus fx1 and this fx2 and fx1 that is nothing it is change in y with change in x at x2 point and this is change in y with change in x at x1 position now with the help of trigonometric uh, with the help of mathematical Taylor series we can expand this value fx2 minus fx1 as uh, fx stands for the change of y with the change of x then this fx2 that is function of x2 can be written in Taylor series as fx1 plus x2 minus x1 and this is change of f with change of x and the point will be at x is equal to x1 the next term will be half of x2 just increase the power x2 minus x1 and just increase the order of the derivative that is change of f with x at a second order derivative again the point is x minus x1 and so on we will increase the another factor and we will get get that is this is x2 minus x1 in the next term we will get cube and this will be the third order derivative at position x minus x1 in the starting we considered this x2 minus x1 these uh, x2 minus x1 they are not having large separation uh, we just put delta x is equal to 0 it means this x2 minus x1 is a very small value and this value can be if squared can be neglected in higher terms so we are just neglecting the higher terms and if we neglect the higher terms and put x2 minus x1 as delta x we get fx2 and if we just move this term fx1 in the right hand side we will get minus fx1 and this term x2 minus x1 we are using instead of this we are using delta x and uh, with that we have change of x or uh, f with the change of x and at any point x is equal to x1 uh, what is f that is change in y with the change in x so just we can put this partial differentiation here instead of f and already we have we are just differentiating f with x so we can get second order derivative partial derivative of y with respect to x just put the value of f that is change of y with respect to x here you will have delta x change of x uh, change of the given function and the given function is this that is change of y with respect change of x and this comes out to be delta x and this is del square y and this is del square x and this is your fx2 minus fx1 just we can substitute this value fx1 minus fx2 and delta x del square y in our above expression that is the vertical force experienced by our element whose length is delta x and just move in upward direction with the coordinate of y and now the force can be given in terms of delta x and this will be uh, now the vertical force that is fy we are just substituting the value of fx2 minus fx1 uh, we calculated in the terms of delta x we will have fy is equal to t delta x and that is change of y with change partial change of x because here the y is depending upon x and t and we are taking for that instant time is constant 
force is also given as mass into uh, acceleration and here the mass of this whole length uh, wire can be considered as total cap uh, capital M and if the length of the wire is L let us consider mu is representing mass per unit length and if uh, mu is representing mass per unit length then what will be the mass of our delta x element what will be the delta m for this delta x element if m is m upon l is representing the mass per unit length then what is the mass of this element the mass of this element can be given as mu times delta x just go for this a mu is representing m upon l into delta x it means you have uh, the mass of this element which have the length delta x we are just putting this value of force that is mass into acceleration we will get that is mass mass comes out to be here mu delta x and what is acceleration acceleration is given by because the body is showing the moment in upward and downward direction so the acceleration will be in the upward and downward direction this is a change of y now we are taking the partial differentiation with respect to t because with respect to t we will get the acceleration and this is t delta x change of y now we are showing it with respect to x uh, just cancel out delta x on both the sides you will have change partial uh, second order partial differentiation of y with respect to time here x is constant and if you just move uh, the reduced mass uh, in the right hand side you will have t upon mu t is representing the tension mu is representing the mass per unit length you will have the partial second order differentiation of y with respect to x here we will take t as a constant and this is nothing this equation is representing the classical wave equation that is a very important equation here t upon mu is representing the velocity of our wave if the velo uh, velocity of our wave and this velocity v square is nothing it is equal to t upon mu or we can say that v is equal to that is under root t upon mu this is the dim uh, this whole unit represents the dimensions of velocity and this whole equation is representing the classical wave equation it is a very important equation and somewhere you get uh, time differentiation at one side and uh, uh, position coordinate differentiation at another side then it means this is uh, this term always represents the velocity term now uh, in our last expression uh, when where we consider the uh, string is made up of large number of finite number of particles we just calculated there uh, that the this uh, acceleration can be given in the terms of uh, mass and number of points also and that uh, was our result that is why p double dot uh, that is acceleration of the pth element it is representing the tension m is representing the point mass and a is representing the distance in between different points and uh, this expression was derived in our previous lecture and now we are again considering uh, this and we will have y double dot is equal to t divided by m a y p plus 1 plus y p minus 1 minus 2 times of y p and is instead of uh, y double dot we are just uh, substituting here change of y with respect to change of t 
and here x can be represented as a constant term and this is equal to t divided by m but in this particular case the separation in between the elements is taken very very small and this separation is delta x and now just we are changing these terms uh, we are just putting one yp with yp plus one and one yp with yp minus one and we will get yp plus one minus yp divided by this is delta x what is yp plus one and minus yp it is the uh, vertical difference in between these two points that is at yp and at yp plus one and with minus we will have again this yp minus yp minus one and this is your delta x instead of a we are using the separation delta x here and if we put the limit that delta x tends to zero what happens to these this is representing the vertical distance in between these two points this is representing the vertical distance in between point p and p minus one that can be represented by partial differentiation of y and that can be represented by a partial change in x so this whole term can be represented as change in y with change of t second order derivative t by m as it is and this whole term can be represented again and uh, that is fx2 minus fx1 and we know that fx2 minus fx1 that comes out to be delta x and that is second order partial derivative of x with the help of taylor series and uh, with the help of taylor series we find out this whole expression and this uh, t by m uh, and delta x del square y upon del x square again we know that this whole term is representing nothing it is representing your wave equation as this equation is representing the wave equation if you just correspond these two equation these two equations are the same equation as this whole term again is representing the value of v square now just putting the approximation that uh, mu is representing mass per unit length then uh, mu can also be given as uh, mu is equal to m divided by delta x if m is representing the mass of the small element and delta x representing the change in the length of the element now we will discuss to different normal modes present in our string with the string which is just strongly attached at the two points two fixed points uh, to find out the normal modes we know that the normal modes all uh, the particles or all the elements of the string they just move in simple harmonic motion and if they are moving in simple harmonic motion they have a constant angular velocity and they have a constant phase if they are in normal modes if the particle uh, elements are in normal modes at any position x y and at any instant of time t they are representing normal modes it means they are in simple harmonic motion and for simple harmonic motion we have an equation that is can be represented as a a cos omega t plus phi where a is a, a function of x because a is showing the amplitude and this uh, amplitude is depending on the uh, horizontal component of our string and if uh, uh, this can uh, this is the displacement then what will be the acceleration just uh, go for the differentiation uh, this for y uh, with respect to t you will get the acceleration of the string at any particular position x and y at any time t you will have minus omega square here ax remain constant because a is only a function of time it uh, doesn't undergo differentiation 
and cos omega t plus 5 will remain as it is similarly we will uh, get second order partial differentiation of uh, y with respect to x taking t as constant we will have change of a with respect to x and cos omega t plus phi remain as it is just putting these two values in our classical wave equation that is this is uh, our classical wave equation we are just putting these two derivatives here we will get just put these two values in the classical wave equation you will have minus omega square a x cos omega t plus phi and in the right hand side we have v square and we have to put the value uh, del square y upon del x square and this is your uh, del square a x del square uh, x square and this is cos omega t plus 5 if you are representing partial and derivative just go for these symbols and on just uh, reshifting and cancel outing the common terms we can just cancel out this term and we can reshift this v square in the uh, in this direction we will have the second order derivative of a with respect to x we are taking here t is common so we are going for the whole uh, change and this is equal to we are just moving this value in this uh, direction omega square and v square what is omega that is your angular velocity what is v that is your linear velocity and here you will get that is ax because we just cancel out this only ax is here v square and omega square remains constant for a, a given mode so we can represent it with the help of a constant and here the constant is taken as k square and this is a x just we are putting k is equal to that is omega upon v and k is nothing uh, this is a wave number because omega is representing the ang uh, velocity uh, frequency angular frequency and v is representing the velocity we will find out that it is a uh, it will produce a number and this number is nothing it is a wave number that is a number of uh, wavelength in one centimeter of length uh, now this ax that is the amplitude of the string at any point x and that will represent a simple harmonic motion because every point on the code represent a simple harmonic motion it can be given as ax is equal to a sine kx plus b cos kx or we can say that if we just go to solve this term that is d square ax upon dx square is equal to minus k square ax uh, this equation have a solution and this solution is given in terms of ax and which is given by like this the conditions are that when x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l the y sh should remain equal to 0 because the string is knotted at these two points it means at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l the y remains at 0 position y will be fixed then to find out y in terms of ax just put the value of ax in our a simple harmonic equation for y uh, we just putting the value of ax here uh, putting the value for this of, of solution of ax in this equation what we will get we will have a sine kx plus b cos kx 
just putting using uh, this equation uh, in this uh, equation and we will get cos omega t plus phi uh, this equation should satisfy these two condition and just put x is equal to 0 if you put x is equal to 0 we will get this whole term is equal to b because cos 0 is equal to 1 and b multiply 1 is equal to b this whole term is becomes equal to 0 now we are left with y x t is equal to b times of cos omega t plus phi but we know that when x is equal to 0 y is fixed that should be equal to 0 it means this equation y equal to 0 is only satisfied when b is equal to 0 so we find out the value of b here uh, and we get b is equal to 0 if b is equal to 0 then what will be the value of ax which we have given this solution if b is equal to 0 it means ax is nothing is it is a sin kx and using ax is equal to a sin kx it means this whole term is 0 so what will be the value of y y x t is equal to a sin k x and cos omega t plus phi what this whole equation is representing this whole equation is representing that any particle or any element on this string which is tied or stretched at the two ends is given uh, the y displacement is given with the help of this equation and we can easily find out the value of k here by putting the conditions again when x is equal to 0 y should be equal to 0 we also know that when x is equal to l at that instant also y should be equal to 0 if just we put x is equal to l then only thus this term get affected uh, it means sine kl should be equal to 0 and it is only possible when kl is n times of pi because we are not putting kl is equal to 0 or n is equal to 0 because if we put n is equal to 0 this whole term get vanishes and there is nothing left to discuss so we have to consider different cases and to obtain different cases we are just putting uh, instead of kl is equal to 0 or n is equal to 0 we are just putting kl is equal to n pi just put uh, sign n pi and we will get for n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 for all these n pi is we will get sin n pi is equal to 0 and what is k from here k is given by n pi divided by l where n is an integer and l is representing the length of our string here uh, in our previous expression we find out k is also given as omega upon v and just uh, we uh, uh, just correlate these two terms what will we have omega that is our angular frequency can be given as k times the velocity and if we put the value of velocity which we have taken as under root t upon mu where mu is representing the reduced mass that is mass per unit length and we are just putting the value of k here from here with n pi upon l and v uh, we are just taking from this under root t upon mu what will we have we have our angular frequency and this angular frequency is equal to just put the value of k n pi upon l and just well put the value of t that is velocity t upon mu that is the reduced mass uh, n is representing the number of modes in which mode your string is vibrating or string is oscillating or string is given simple harmonic motion with n the angular 
frequency is going to change it means this angular frequency is representing the frequency uh, for the normal mode n when the motion of the string is the it representing the normal mode n so this is your angular frequency for n mode uh, to find out the linear frequency just put the relation in between linear frequency and angular frequency uh, we know that angular frequency is given as 2 pi times of our linear frequency so if we put omega uh, instead of omega n if we put here uh, 2 pi nu n uh, pi will cancel out pi and 2 will move in this direction and we will get the linear frequency and the linear frequency comes out to be nu n is equal to 1 upon 2 l under root of t that is representing tension and mu that is representing the mass per unit length just put the different values for l and we will get our uh, relation for different values of our frequency uh, how we are going to discuss the different overtones or uh, fundamental modes or harmonics just we are going to discuss about all the things which we get when we when the uh, strings attached at the two ends going to vibrate let us consider this is our string and we know that the tension in the string is t because this is stretched at both the ends it means the tension there will be a tension and the string is attached at these two ends and uh, at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l we get y is equal to 0 at both these two ends and the length of the string we know this length is the uh, length of the string is l and the reduced mass of the string that is equal to mu then what sort of frequencies you are uh, you will get if you uh, vibrate it this is the simplest mode which we get if this is your mean position of the string and you just give a slight disturbance the string will move or string will oscillate like this it will show the simple harmonic motion like this all these particles will move with a singular angular frequency or single linear frequency and this linear frequency is given by 1 upon 2 l under root t by mu in this case uh, just put the values of uh, n here and if you put the values of uh, n uh, here we have uh, n divided by 2 l just put the values of n here you will get the different values of frequency in case it is representing the first normal mode we just put the value of n here n is equal to 1 and this is your frequency but what about the particle displacements different at different positions what is the displacement of these particles this is given by the relation y x t is equal to a sine k x cos omega t plus phi if we are putting all these things for the first normal mode just put it one we are getting amplitude for force first mode put there also one uh, this is again one that is uh, your wave number because we are considering it for the first normal mode again uh, we have first mode uh, angular frequency we are putting it one now substitute the value of k what will we get we will have y1 x t is equal to a1 sine just put the value of k and again in k put the value of n is equal to 1 you will have pi x divided by l cos omega 1 t plus phi and the value of omega 1 
we can find out with the help of this expression uh, now just satisfy these two condition at x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 and x is equal to l y is equal to 0 if we put x is equal to 0 this whole term is going to be 0 it means the first condition is satisfied if we put x is equal to l here this will cancel out each other and sine pi that is sine 180 degree again it is 0 this whole term is going to be 0 it means only at the two points we are getting the displacement of the string is equal to 0 and these two points are known as nodes the points where y is equal to 0 these points are known as nodes similarly if we get more disturbance or we give more disturbance to our string now the string will show the simple harmonic motion like that and we will find out that at x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 at y x is equal to l by 2 this is the half portion of your string y is again to be 0 and at x is equal to l again y is equal to 0 now we will discuss step by step what will happen to the frequency and what is going with the displacement of the different particles as the frequency is given by n divided by 2l under root t upon mu this is our second normal mode what will happen to the frequency frequency comes out to be nu2 and this is just put n is equal to 2 and this will cancel out and we will get 1 upon l and this is t by mu or we can say that if we just multiply this term by 2 we will get mu2 and just multiply this term by 2 and we will have this and you will get a relation in between these two frequencies this mode of vibration is known as fundamental mode or also known as first harmonic now as this mode has a twice of frequency of the fundamental mode it this is known as second harmonic mode or also known as first overtone as these are multiples of each other so we are getting uh, just going to give it a no, uh, notation that is when n is equal to that is talking about the second normal mode this second normal mode is known as second harmonic or known as first overtone now we will discuss about the different displacement of different particles in our string which can be given by y to x t is equal to a to sine just put the value of k and in k put the value of n 2 pi x divided by l cos now the frequency angular frequency is omega 2 for the second mode we will get cos omega 2 t plus phi 2 now just put all satisfy all the conditions if we put x is equal to 0 this whole term is going to be 0 if we put x is equal to l by 2 just put here x is equal to l by 2 l will cancel out l 2 by cancel out 2 you will left with sin pi and this is again 0 it means the condition is satisfied if we put x is equal to l just put x is equal to l l will cancel out l you will left with sin 2 pi and again this whole term is going to be 0 uh, in this way we are going to have different overtones different harmonics and 
these are the points where the magnitude of uh, displacement in the vertical direction is zero and these two points are known as nodes these points in this case we have three nodes and these points which have showing maximum displacement from the mean position these are known as anti nodes and these points are known as nodes this is whole about the string what will the string show what will build the string look like when it is fixed at two points with a tension t